Hello friends, welcome to a new lecture on antepartum fetal surveillance. We do a number of tests for fetal surveillance. So these are the list of tests which we do for fetal surveillance. So if you can see, these tests include, I think you can see now, one fetal movement count, then cardiotocography. In the cardiotocography, we can do non-stress test, vibroacoustic stimulation, contraction stress test, or we can do ultrasonography biophysical profile and Doppler studies. So these are the different tests which we do for fetal well-being. So we will learn about some of the tests now. Uh, so what are the indications of antepartum fetal surveillance? Right now every pregnant woman, for every pregnant woman we do antepartum fetal surveillance to find if there are any risk factors and if there are any risk factors or if there are any problems, then we will have to monitor them slowly every for every trimester and in every visit, we will have to monitor for various complications in pregnancy. Now, when do we start fetal surveillance? The initial testing for antepartum fetal surveillance, it should be started at 32 to 34 weeks of gestation if it is high risk pregnancy okay now how are we going to do antepartum fetal surveillance i have uh, measure i have right, right now i have already shown you a number of tests which can be done so the first test which can be done for antepartum fetal surveillance is fetal movement count so in fetal movement count um, you'll have to ask the mother to count the fetal movements, gross body movements of the fetus. Whenever there is hypoxia, that is decreased oxygen, or whenever there is uh, placental dysfunction, or if there is any fetal distress, then the movements of the, uh, the gross movements of the baby are decreased. So all these will decrease the gross movements of the baby. So as a result, the uh, fetal count will also decrease okay then fetal count will also decrease as a result uh, counting fetal heart movement fetal movement counting it is one of the best test an inexpensive test which is um, advised to the mother for every mother we advise to count the fetal movements the counting there is a, a kick count chart which can be done that is called as Chardiff kick chart. In this Chardiff kick chart, the movements, all the movements, the fetal movements, these are counted over uh, for 12 hours and these movements are noted on a chart. Okay, for the whole 12 hours, the movements of the baby are counted and these are noted on the chart. If there are at least 10 or more movements in 12 hours, then it is a reassuring better uh, fetal movement count. Okay, so this is about fetal movement count. If there is any fetal decrease in fetal movement count, then we always have to follow up with either cardiotocogram or ultrasound examination should be done. To know the cause of decreased fetal cardio, sorry, decreased fetal movement count. So the second test which can be done is cardiotocography. Or it is also called as electronic fetal heart monitoring. Electronic fetal monitoring. So, this cardiotocography, there are two transducers. In this cardiotocogram, generally the cardiotocography is of two types. First, it is external cardiotocography or internal cardiotocography. Okay, this external cardiotocography, it is done... Uh, for antepartum surveillance. And also intrapartum. Whereas 
internal cardiotocography it is used in labor after the membranes are ruptured